Um, I'm really going to be making all of these later. Um, and uh, what I do is I, I think, think them out. I don't write them out, obviously. <laughs> obviously. But I think them out ahead of time and try to figure out where we go off track. And um, if I'm going to go off track, then I make separate videos because if it's two different topics, then somebody might be interested in one and not the other. Plus, they get really long. So, anyway, so maybe this is like a part one of two. So they go about the same thing, but different ways. Anyway, I'm rambling uh, again. Um, the point of this video is to talk about um, confrontation and explosiveness uh, for avoidant people. Um, because... There's, well, there's a lot of reasons that lead up to it. Um, first of all, um, people don't think they're worth somebody else sort of bending to their will. Um, and they don't think that even if they stand up and say, hey, I want you to do this, and they don't, you know, based on their experience, they don't think people are actually going to do that. That they're they're still going to do whatever they want and, and ignore the problems that the one person has brought forth. Um, so they don't generally, um, it's kind of rare, uh, for an avoidant person to confront somebody and, and the thing is, okay, yes, it is a possibility that you get somebody that gets extremely defensive and they're like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to change this, blah, 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 blah. That's true. You might get somebody that's going to be like, I'm not going to change a thing ever. Um... But that's actually uncommon. Usually people, maybe, I mean, it depends how you put it. I mean, if you come across this, I'm giving you an ultimatum. You have to stop chewing pencils or I can't even ever see you again in my life. Okay, you know, that's going to cause somebody to become really, really defensive. But, um, you know, if you would say, okay, you realize to do this, you do this. And I know it's just a habit and it's annoying and it bothers me and it, it just gets on my nerves and it's really irritating and I really wish you would try to stop doing that around me. You know what? That, that would be received a lot better and they might stop or they might, you know, whatever that you need done, they might be able to substitute something else. Um, so that, um, they can, um, I don't know, this is, it's hard to do this without having examples, but they might, they might be able to, instead of completely stopping whatever it is that's so irritating to you, they might amend it, or they might be able to figure a way to have, you know, help you to learn to deal with it, or, or something like that, and if they point blank don't, then I know that the avoidance says that there's only a few people on the planet that will have anything to do with you, um, but it's, it's better to, to get rid of them completely and to find somebody else. Um, if they may, I mean, that's actually a really good test to see if somebody is interested enough in you in order. And I mean, we're not talking like giant things like, you know, you have to completely change your personality. It would be the same as if somebody said, Hey, you know what? I really like you, but, uh, you have to come out every Saturday and Sunday night and, um, usually Friday and Thursday too. Um, and you have to hang out with all my friends and you have to be like the party. Um, and that's the only way I can do you. That's not going to work. So you can't expect somebody else to make a change like that. If somebody is that radically different from you, obviously it's just not going to work. But if somebody is just doing something that's really triggering you, um, you know, they might not be even aware that they're doing it. They might be that it's your thing. Nobody else. I mean, it might be that something irritates everybody. This person has ever come across and nobody has bothered to say, by the way, it's, you know, obnoxious when you do this. And that, again, that would cause them really defensive, but I mean, really, you, you could be helping them a lot. Um, and they're, they, 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 yes, they could reciprocate. And they could say, okay, fine, if I'm going to do this, then you are you need to do this. And that might not work. Um, 
But it is a real compliment if you have somebody that's important enough for you to get over the avoidant feelings of, I'm not worthy, it's not going to work, I don't want to speak up, blah, 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 in order to speak up. Um, and actually, I sort of hedge and cheat. When I do that, I will say, you know, I'll just say exactly that. I'll say, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't usually say something. Um, you know, and I usually don't say something until it's, it's basically deal breaker. And, um, so there's this thing you do, this habit, and I need you to work on that. And I need you to try not to do that around me. And if you can't, I can't be around you, but, um, you know, it's, it's a compliment basically that I'm talking to you about this instead of doing what the normal, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I think that the normal behavior for avoidant people is to basically suck it up, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up until they can't anymore. And then they just explode at somebody and they, you know, people will be absolutely blindsided, like, I slurp my soup? And it's usually never something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm going to make these really simple little, you know, annoying quirks and making the way people sound stupid. I mean, usually it's something like, you know, you text me at work. And you know I'm at work, and you know it stresses me out. You know it throws everything off. It takes my my work, which is, I have to focus so hard in order to go to this job and be with these people, and then you throw yourself in the mix, and it, it doesn't make me feel like you're checking up on me and, and being kind. It feels like you're pressuring me, and it feels like you're, you know, expecting some response because you don't understand that I spend 30 minutes of absolute concentration before I can come up with a way to text you back. And so then I can't work and I'm worried that you're going to think I'm ignoring you because I have to ignore you because I can't, you know, I mean, this is the type of thing. That's the reality. That's the type of thing that avoiding people go through and they don't want to say anything because they, that's weird. That's weird to have to say, don't text me at work. That's weird. People do it all the time, but it's a major problem for sometimes. I mean, something like that. Um, and they don't want to say anything, and they don't want to say anything. They don't want to confront anybody. And then it just gets to the point where they just like, I mean, it is. It's like volcanic and explosive, and rah, you did, blah, 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 blah. You can't ever do this again. And they're like, what? I've been doing this for four months. What? 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 And then they get all upset. Like, why didn't you ever say anything? If this was so upsetting to you, why didn't you ever say anything? And usually if that's the case, if you've got something that you've been holding back and holding back and holding back and holding back and you finally say, blah, here it is. Then usually at that point, you're done with that person. You're over that person. Um, and even if they can somehow do whatever it is that you required, for them to do, it doesn't matter. They're gone because it's, it's somebody that you either tell them up front, you know, this happened three or four times and it seems like it's going to be a pattern and it's not a pattern that I can have in my life. So something needs to get, it needs to change a little bit. I mean, if you tell them that in the beginning, that means that you want the relationship to continue. If you wait and you're just like, Blah. then it's done. Um, it doesn't have to be even friendships or romantic relationships. Um, I basically had that happen this summer, um, with one of my son's doctors and with her, we did kind of try to tell her, Hey, you're doing this and this and this and this and this wrong. And <laughs> what she would do is she would tilt her little head and give us this look like with this sort of little smile, extremely condescending. 
and then turn around and tell us how wrong we were. Um, and she just plain wasn't even doing her job. Um, because she got caught up and obsessed with this other thing that was, that she thought was going on. And it wasn't, and, uh, it's really, really, I mean, it was stunning and shocking because this is a doctor and, oh my God. But, um, yeah, we tried with her a couple times to, to basically get her to go on, on board and on track and she refused and I had to fire her. And it was bad firing because, again, she wasn't listening to anything that we had to say, uh, and she was trying to make it sound like I was crazy. Uh, she was trying to make it sound like it was the avoidance that was speaking. It wasn't that she was incompetent. It was that I was avoiding. And I'm like, it's not even me you're dealing with. It's my son. Um, no. So... And that, that's, that, that is the problem. You do every once in a while run into somebody who is so self-centered that it doesn't matter what you say. They think that they are God's gift and there's nothing they do wrong and they're never going to change. And those people, you've got to get out of your life. As hard as it is, it, as hard as it is as an avoidant and as few people that have in your life, if there's somebody who absolutely refuses to budget all because you know what the truth is people who don't even know you're avoidant can well they can tell they can tell that you never make demands of them and they sort of want that and i don't mean they want okay you know you've got to do this that and the other blah 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 i mean they just want to i mean because they can tell they exactly what i was saying before about the difference between somebody who is actually interacting in their relationship and saying you know this is what i need they know i mean even the most non-avoidant you know gregarious person they, they, that's, that shows there's a level of deepness of the relationship that it's not just a superficial thing that you can say, I need this, I need this, I need this. Um, and, and you know, it, does, it doesn't have to be a lot. It's just a little bit. And, and they are aware that you are basically all in, in the relationship. If you're willing to say, need to tweak it a little bit because you know and and they most people are extremely willing to make those little tweaks unfortunately if you come from an abused background of course abusers are not going to want to change because they're getting something done for themselves when they do their abuse and they're not going to want to stop abusing somebody so you're thinking nobody will do anything to change for you and the generally that's actually not true. And I'm not talking about, again, I'm not talking about giant things. I'm talking about little things. So these are the ways that people do it. When you confront somebody, you either do it in the beginning in order to avoid getting to the point where you have to leave, or you do it as a way of leaving a relationship. And it's at the end. And, um, I don't know. It, it's kind of not fair to the other person if you wait to the end, but who really cares? Because they're not avoiding it anymore. Um, so I don't really judge other than if this is a pattern that you have, that you find at the very end, you explode at somebody and then you have to make them go because you're embarrassed because you exploded at them, um, regardless of whether or not they were able to comply. Um, think about trying to do it a little bit earlier. Uh, if it's something that you want to keep in your life. Um, you know, because they're, they're, you can change a habit that, that it's hard, but some people are worth it. And some people, you know, yeah, that's what you need to do to, to salvage a relationship is speak up earlier, basically.